Broadcast signal and eruptions are a bit of a strange phenomenon. You've probably heard of notable intrusions, like the Max Headroom incident. While what's going on here is relatively simple, I mean someone just needs to blast a more powerful signal on the same frequency as whatever TV you're watching, signal intrusions have become quite a strange topic on the internet recently. But more than just that, broadcast signal and eruptions have had a clear influence on many ARGs and analog horror series, which is why people have begun to appreciate the real thing. Today, I'll be covering the Signal Broadcast Interruption Iceberg Chart, created by u slash Mediatation on Reddit. We're going to be looking at signal broadcast interruptions from the well-known to the increasingly strange and creepy. With that all said, sit back and relax as I dive into this video. I'll quickly ask that if you enjoy this content, stick around to the channel by subscribing, and if you want to join the Seed Butter community, hop in our Discord, the link to which is in the description of this video. As a final note, I've been in contact with the creator of this iceberg who has said that they're actively working on an update to this one, so if you show this video some love, I can guarantee there'll be a part two with deeper, darker entries. The Max Headroom Incident The Max Headroom Incident is insanely well known, but it's still interesting. This incident was a series of two signal hijackings occurring in the Chicago area. The first incident occurred during the sports section of WGN-TV where, for 30 seconds, an unidentified person wearing a Max Headroom costume swayed around the frame as a static buzzing noise could be heard in the background. The second incident occurred about two hours later during a broadcast of Doctor Who, and if you can believe it, is stranger than the first. The Max Headroom figure appears again, but this time you can hear him speak, as he rambles on about completely random topics, like calling a sportscaster a freaking liberal or talking about Pepsi. This part of the segment is also filled with some weird, obscene gestures, and uh, the ending is just absolutely insane. Uh, technicians at the time were completely at the mercy of these hijackers because there was no one working at the broadcast tower at that time, so the video only ended when the culprit wanted it to. There was a huge federal investigation about this incident, but ultimately no one was found responsible. While most theories about this incident speculate that it was just a big troll, some think it could have been done by a disgruntled employee, which actually makes sense. It's likely that the incident required both equipment and technical knowledge, but besides that, there are literally no leads. There was a really interesting Reddit post a while back from someone who claimed to know two potential suspects, and though the whole story is a pretty cool read, he did formally exclude the two people as suspects in the end. This entry is still 100% a mystery. Southern Television The Southern Television interruption occurred in 1977 in the southern part of the UK. The video is difficult to understand, but it's essentially a joke broadcast from an alien invader who calls himself Virilian, a representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command. Virilian, somewhat nobly, advocated for humans to abandon all their weapons and prepare for a future awakening as well as a higher state of evolution. The person behind this incident was never caught. I'll play a little bit more of this one, but I highly encourage you go watch the full thing on your own. This is the voice of Grimaud, representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command, speaking to you. For many years, you have seen us as knights in the skies. We speak to you now. You send us them as we have done to your brothers and sisters all over this, your planet Earth. We come to warn you of the destiny of your race and your world so that you may communicate to your fellow beings the course you must take. Captain Midnight. The Captain Midnight intrusion occurred in 1986 when John McDougal, going by the name Captain Midnight, hijacked HBO with a four and a half minute message protesting their subscription prices. Unlike some of the other incidents on this list, McDougal was an actual technician who made this interruption from his workplace, which was partially why he got caught so easily. It didn't take the FCC and FBI long to figure out what sort of dish made this transmission, and therefore they were able to narrow down the few locations on the East Coast where the hijacking could have taken place. McDougal quickly surrendered to the authorities, and he got off with a fine as well as a temporary suspension of his radio license, but the incident led to many things like the automatic transmitter identification system being adopted, which made broadcast intrusions like this much more difficult in the future. Playboy Religious Message during a screening of the movie The Three Daughters on the Playboy channel, a text-only interruption occurred, reading off two Bible verses. 
Any actual video of this incident is unavailable, and this has been a lost media subject for a while, but there is one photo of what actually happened. The interruption was conducted by Thomas Haney, an employee of the Christian Broadcasting Network. After this incident, he got hit with a ton of community service hours, probation, and a fine, and was interestingly the first person to be convicted of violating laws that were established after the Captain Midnight incident. Iran Woman Hijacking This is one of the more interesting incidents on the iceberg because it literally happened in October of this year. This entry refers to an incident from October 8th where, during the ongoing protests in Iran, an Irani state broadcast was interrupted by a message made by a group called Ali's Justice. It only lasted a few seconds, so you can watch the full thing right here. CBS Nazi Man This entry, as well as the following entry, are the oldest on this iceberg so far. This incident occurred in 1943 when a CBS radio program was interrupted for 90 seconds by a man yelling about Nazi content. Unfortunately, it's hard to dig up much info on this entry because besides a newspaper from the next day that talked about what happened, there's nothing you can find. There's no recording of what happened, although this would be interesting to listen to. Whoever did this was never caught, but it's suspected that this was some sort of Nazi sympathizer. This could be the first instance of a signal intrusion. Von Donald Von Donald was a Nazi who took control of a radio station in England during World War II. He impersonated an English soldier or general, and he tried to spread German propaganda from the perspective of an Englishman, though his accent was terrible. He was given the nickname Von Donald because he sounded like Donald Duck when he impersonated a Nazi. Now, I can't find much information on this entry, and I actually got all the information I have from the creator of this iceberg. Though, when I make a part two, I'll be sure to include as much new information about this topic as I can. Jesus help us all, Lord. This is actually my favorite entry on this entire iceberg. On January 3rd, 2007 in Australia, during an episode of the show May Day, the audio of the transmission was seemingly hijacked and the phrase, Jesus help us, Lord, could be heard repeatedly for six straight minutes. Now, this sounds like a textbook signal intrusion, but apparently this wasn't an attack or a prank. A Channel 7 representative claimed that a line in the documentary that said, Jesus Christ, one of the Navarans, was essentially repeating as the tape was stuck due to a technical glitch. But here's the thing, that's completely false. First off, the audio you can hear here is clearly in an American accent, though the show is Canadian. Also, the line is definitely, Jesus help us all, Lord, not Jesus is one of the Navarans. Curiously, the audio was identified as being from a clip of a civilian truck that was ambushed in Iraq. This video was uploaded to YouTube in 2005 and was taken by a man named Preston Wheeler. Take a listen to both of these clips played after another. Jesus Christ, help us all, Lord. Jesus Christ, help us all, Lord. So the thing is, it's nearly impossible that this was just a run-of-the-mill glitch, even if it wasn't an intrusion. I mean, why would Channel 7 even have that audio in the first place? This is a mystery that has yet to be solved, but is relatively obscure when it comes to signal intrusions. I'd be curious to see if there will be any new developments on this topic in the next few years or so. So this entry right here is very broad, it's referring to the many broadcasts that have been interrupted by NSFW and not safe for seed butter material. In some particularly heinous cases, NSFW material was played over children's shows, which is disgusting. One example of this happened during a showing of Handy Manny in 2007. I won't go into detail about these, and I obviously can't show them on here, but yeah, they exist. You can read more about it on the Wikipedia article here. 1966 Nuclear War so there isn't much I can report about on this one, and I don't have a recording of the incident, but in 1966, a Russian teenager sent out a broadcast out of the city of Kaluga, saying that nuclear war had broke out with the United States. While this was a small pirate radio incident that didn't reach that far or make a big problem, it was probably terrifying to hear back then. Soviet Pirate Broadcasting This is a very broad topic, so I'll try to keep it as short as possible. 
Pirate broadcasting is the practice of playing TV shows or songs over the radio or TV that you don't own, essentially distributing them for free. Hijacking radio and TV stations was very common in the 70s and 80s in the Soviet Union because there wasn't much broadcasting that didn't come from the government, even though people obviously wanted to watch other content. The quote-unquote problem was extremely prolific at the time, and it was also filled with pranks like the nuclear war entry we just discussed. The government tried to crack down on this, even creating a smear campaign about pirates. They created reporting hotlines and even suggested that ambulances were unable to function due to the radio piracy, which was certainly untrue. While this is too big of a topic to fully unpack here, I think it's a quite interesting one. WIBI and WBAB on two occasions within two weeks of each other in 2006, two New York radio stations were hijacked for around 90 seconds each, at which point the perpetrator broadcasted an extremely hateful song, the name to which I cannot say here, but you can look up on Wikipedia. And you can also listen to a censored version of the incident right here. Analysts, the winner will be picked on May 24th. BAB weather today, mix of sun and clouds with a high of 68. I'm Ted Lindner with Roger and JP on Long Island's number one rock station, 102.3 WBAB. He sucked and was probably just done by overpowering the studio transmitter link with an amateur setup. Many people working at the station came out to apologize after the incident, including the general manager who had only been there a single week before this happened. Poor dude. Cucumber, Radio Millimeter, Green Goat, and Fortune and Co. This entry refers to Soviet era pirate broadcasting that we just talked about. These words specifically are iconic call signs of hackers that often took over the relay stations. The Winker Song Interruption. So the Winker Song is a comedy song. It's actually supposed to be called Winker with an A, but this was changed to make the title at least sort of appropriate. In 2017, a local radio station in Nottinghamshire was hijacked eight times within two months just to play this song, which is freaking hilarious. Playboy for Preschoolers. In March 16th of 2010, the Time Warner Kids and Kids Preschool channels played two hours of Playboy channel content. Strangely though for this iceberg, this wasn't a signal hijacking, it was a self-admitted technical error from Time Warner Cable. Other channels at the time just showed a black screen. This is obviously a pretty big mess up and went on for way too long. Israel Flowers for Eurovision So before I explain this entry, I'll explain what Eurovision is. Eurovision is an international song contest hosted by the European Broadcasting Union. Though the participants are usually from European countries, Israel as well as some other non-European countries often participate. So in 1978, during Israel's song, a Jordanadian broadcaster refused to show Israel's entry, but instead just cut to a picture of flowers. This wasn't so much a hijacking as it was intentional. And then when it became clear that Israel was going to win, the Jordanadian Broadcasting Service just ended the transmission and actually announced that Belgium, who came in second place, had won. Zetehoven hijacking. So there's a Czech show called Panorama, which basically just shows pretty shots of Prague and other places across the country, like landscapes. Well, the art group Zetehoven got the half-hilarious, half-crazy idea to broadcast a sort of authentic-looking video of a gigantic explosion in one of those places, ending in what could be assumed as an EMP that damages the transmission. This definitely could have convinced a lot of people. I mean, for 2007, this editing is great. But the group did put their web address in the video, kind of giving it away, and they had done this type of thing before. The television service considered legal action, but ultimately they just let it be, and nothing like this has come out of the art group since this incident in 2007. Television Solidarity in 1985, four Polish astronomers broadcasted messages supporting a labor movement over state-run broadcasts in Torun. The astronomers were charged, but as members of the scientific community who had provided a lot to the public, a judge showed them leniency and just gave them probation and a small fee. Zombie Invasion On February 11, 2013, incidents occurred in New Mexico, Wisconsin, and Montana, where messages saying that the dead were rising from the living and attacking people were broadcasted. 
The hackers managed to specifically hack the stations in a way that let them make custom messages with the emergency message function, which, while funny, led to the arrest of four hackers. Civil authorities in your area have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. Follow the messages on screen that will be updated as information becomes available. Do not attempt to approach or apprehend these bodies as they are considered extremely dangerous. I repeat. Monotic Anonymous Hijacking Anonymous has done all kinds of stuff to Russia since the war in Ukraine started, one of which being the February 22, 2022 hijacking of a pro-Kremlin TV channel broadcasting a poem by Monotic, a Ukrainian singer, as well as pro-Ukrainian visuals. Don't be a chump, vote for Trump. This entry is quite interesting because it remains unsolved. In Warren, Massachusetts during the 2020 presidential election, when you drove through a small zone that's only a few streets long, you could hear the radio station 105.5 FM start playing a message that said, don't be a chump, vote for Trump. Now, based on the very small broadcasting area, it's likely that someone was just doing this out of their garage with some amateur equipment, which is in fact illegal. The local police reached out to the FCC for help triangulating the signal's location, but the FCC never responded, and now that it's stopped, they probably never will. So the person behind this small radio hijacking will never be known, but it is quite funny. Al Haggadal Hamas hijacking. This entry refers to the Israeli version of the show Big Brother, which was hijacked on March 11, 2016. For three and a half minutes, they were shown Hamas propaganda. Blood is on your hands. This entry is really interesting. It refers to another incident during the war in Ukraine, this one occurring on March 9th during Moscow's Victory Day parade. The names of TV stations were hacked to show phrases like, blood is on your hands, the government is lying, and more. This is a really cool piece of resistance, and it's interesting how the hackers behind this were able to pull it off. Now, I don't know any Russian, so I have no idea what these TV listings actually say, but if anyone can read the text in this video, drop an explanation down in the comments. Your day is coming. This incident occurred during the 2006 Lebanon War, where Israel hijacked Hezbollah's Al-Manar TV, playing an anti-Hamas message. It showed Hamas leader Hassan Nasrallah with crosshairs over his face and a voice saying, your day is coming, followed by military footage. All right, guys, so if you're an eagle-eyed watcher, you may have noticed that I skipped over a few entries. And that's actually because this iceberg got a short update while I was about halfway through editing the video. The creator managed to throw three more entries on there and sent them over to me. I figured I'd just add this short bit of new entries at the very end here, so enjoy some bonus content. I do believe this iceberg will still get a future update, so stay tuned nonetheless. Radio 4625 kilohertz. UVB76 is a radio station in Russia broadcasting on the 4625 kilohertz frequency. Nicknamed The Buzzer, this station literally just plays buzzing noises all day and night, though it's occasionally interrupted by a Russian voice. Reportedly, it's been around since the 1970s. Four types of messages can be heard from this radio station, in between the constant static. The first is the monolith, which has a call sign, five-digit IDs, and a message. Next is the usor, which has a call sign read twice, then a message. Third is the commanda, which includes a call sign read twice, then this phrase, then a number, though these haven't been heard in years. The final category of these messages includes those that don't fit into all three of these formats. These include conversations, snippets of media, and even images encoded through a spectrogram. Many of these stranger broadcasts have been attributed to pirates. For example, some have claimed that the Gangnam style played over the frequency, which was likely due to a hijack. You can actually listen in to UVB76 if you want, though we'll never have a perfect answer for what actually goes on here. No active government officials have ever confirmed its purpose, though a former communications minister from Lithuania said that the purpose of these messages were to confirm that radio operators were alert. In all likelihood, though, this is probably used for Russian military or intelligence communications. The buzzing serves as a deterrent for hackers, since there's always something being broadcast on the frequency, meaning it would take lots of effort to drown out the noise. Furthermore, this use of call signs and codes makes it sort of obvious that this is being used in an intelligence capacity. 
KLEE. The KLEE story is a fascinating entry, and it's maybe my second favorite entry on this iceberg. Back in 1953, on September 14th, many people in England had their TV shows interrupted by a call card for the TV station KLEE, which was based out of Houston, Texas of all places. Many incredulous viewers took pictures of the event, which shouldn't have happened at all. How on earth could an American TV signal, which keep in mind was different than British TV signals, end up going all the way across the Atlantic? Sleuth set out to get to the bottom of it, going so far as to contact KLEE with proof, sending a letter to the president that read, Enclosed herewith is a photograph taken by an ordinary box camera, what I believe is your test signal received 3.50 p.m. 14 September 1953. It would be of great interest and help if you could be so kind as to confirm or deny by return mail that this is so, and at the same time it would be of great help if you would endorse the back of the photograph and return. Your help in this matter would be much appreciated. But get this. The baffled recipient of this letter confirmed that the title card hadn't been played in years. Theories ran rampant. Was this pirate television? Was it a signal being bounced off a celestial body back to Earth? Or even crazier, was it an alien? Well, there's a much more sensible explanation. You see, many other American television companies got similar letters from English viewers. But the thing is, none of them were actually real. Well, they were real, but not genuine. A would-be entrepreneur actually sent out all of these letters to TV stations, many of which just threw them away. The whole thing was a marketing stunt by him to promote a TV set that could, without even having antennae, receive signals from all around the world. He somehow acquired these title cards from all sorts of TV stations around the globe, and then took pictures of his own TV and sent the photos to those stations. There were no people who actually saw this event. It was totally fabricated, but it was in the news for days, and the speculation that the incident caused was hilarious. Would you could you on a train? On September 29, 2016, a train crashed in Hoboken Terminal in New Jersey. The crash was caused when the operator, who had an undiagnosed sleep disorder, passed out and failed to activate the brake. One person was killed and 114 were injured, including the driver. Now this accident, while tragic, wouldn't be remembered as well today if it weren't for one strange thing. The night before, the regional WKTV station played a strange emergency message about hazardous material. It contained a Dr. Seuss quote. Would you, could you, on a train? When this first happened, WKTV said that there was no real warning, though this was sent out by FEMA. FEMA quickly confirmed that they sent no such message. The source of this track, or really any conclusive information about what happened, remains unknown. So how could a transmission only four hours away from a train crash the very next day seemingly predict what happened? Was this a warning? A trigger phrase for a sleeper agent? Who knows? All right, guys, thanks for joining me and watching the Signal Broadcast Interruption Iceberg. I hope you enjoyed this mysterious content, and I can promise that more icebergs like this are on the way, as well as an update video or two and some more ARG content. And like I said, this iceberg is in the process of getting updated, so if this video does well, there will certainly be a part two. Subscribe if you enjoyed this, and please consider joining the Discord to engage with the Seed Butter community and help pick future videos. Thanks again for your attention, and good night. All right, guys, I just wanted to throw this unscripted side note in here, but if all goes well, this video will be uploaded on November 11th, 2022, which is actually the one year anniversary of the first video I uploaded to this channel. And I just want to take a minute and say how happy I am and how proud I am of this channel and where it's come in the past year. I'm very appreciative of all the support you guys have showed me throughout 2021 and 2022. I've come a long way since I made that first Just Cause 3 video, and it's just been an incredible journey. I hope that in the future I can make some content that you guys really, really enjoy. Have a good night.